I went to my dad's toolbox. I got some sandpaper. <gasps> Brand new sandpaper. I'm not crazy. Oh my god. I'm trembling, bitch. <laughs> Aloha everyone, welcome to Skincare with Hiram. If you don't know who I am, my name's Hiram and I'm passionate about teaching you how to perfect your skincare routine. So make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so that you can see my videos every single week. I finished a live stream not too long ago, which by the way, if you wanna know when I do my live streams on YouTube, you should follow me on Instagram because I post all the updates there. But for God knows why I decided to do my live stream at 7 a.m. this morning, which was not smart. But I think the eye bags are finally calmed down. I get such bad eye bags in the morning. If you suffer from genetic puffy eye bags in the morning, Get some sleep, you underslept bitch. That's a self call out. So this morning has been, you know, productive as planned, but I also spent an hour watching TikToks. It's so addictive. And it only took an hour of watching TikToks before I was like, Hiram, why don't you actually put this time to use and make a video of you reacting to TikToks? Definitely planned this. If you don't follow me on TikTok, where have you been? <laughs> No, I'm kidding. But honestly, my TikTok is a fun place. I get to react to your guys' skincare routines and see all the different things that you post, your skin glow ups, busting myths, all that kind of stuff. But I recently did a TikTok where I asked you guys to share your skincare horror stories. And it has been so fun. <laughs> I don't know if that's the right word. Horrifying to see what you guys have done to your faces. My God, I only thought the skin could go through so much. And then I watched these videos and it raised it up a whole 10 levels, bitch. I've been liking, commenting, and reacting to your skincare horror stories on TikTok. So if you do have one, you should totally go over to TikTok and make one for me to see or react to. But in this video, I figured why not make an entire video just reacting to a bunch of your stories, scarring myself for entertainment, and just do it all in one big swoop because there have been thousands of videos that you guys have tagged me in. And I can only react to one at a time on TikTok. So this is the perfect time. And I've already seen some traumatizing shit using pumice stones on the face, using urine on the face. Yeah, urine. <gasps> oh, that's my nervous laugh. I'm just gonna randomly react to these videos and hopefully survive. We'll see, stay tuned. So let's get into it. Okay, just a quick mental meditation before I embark on this journey that's about to scar me. Alexa, put therapist on speed dial. Okay, here we go. What is the worst thing you've done to your skin? Finally, it's my time to shine. Oh boy. And by shine, I mean be horribly embarrassed and filled with regret. Hey, we've all, all been right, there. All right, so I've had fairly aggressive acne my entire life. I'm in my late 30s now. I'm still okay. breaking Beautiful out. I've skin. got my little pimple patches on. No, you have glowing skin. I'm gonna take skin. you back to 1999, okay? I'm about 15. Okay. And I'd heard that exfoliation and cell turnover is gonna help with acne. That's always but the tricky not one. an average exfoliation for me, okay? I wanted to go hardcore. So what did I do? I went to my dad's toolbox. I got some sandpaper. <gasps> Brand new sandpaper. I'm not crazy. I then proceeded to sand my acne off. I'm bleeding at this point, okay? My face resembles oh my raw hamburger meat. And I finish it off with a sweep of isopropyl rubbing alcohol all over. My face is on fire. Oh I'm my still God. dealing with the scars. What is the worst thing you've done to your skin? Oh my God. I'm trembling, bitch. How did it get bad so fast? Sandpaper? You know that sandpaper is literally made of... What is it called? Fiberglass? Yeah, fiberglass. Have you guys ever gotten fiberglass in your skin? It is horrific. When I was young and I worked on a project and I did a lot of roofing projects where I would put the shingles on. And one time I was so smart and decided to not use gloves because that's what an intelligent person does. Fiberglass all over my hands. I couldn't even hold a pencil for a week. I had to put lotion all over them. I sat in class like and it stung and it burned so badly. And that's not even talking about just like the fact that you were bleeding after rubbing sandpaper and then to top off the shit that is this skincare routine. Rubbing alcohol? I don't know if I'm emotionally equipped to handle this. This is a bit too much. <laughs> oh my God, sandpaper, sandpaper. Oh, hi, Oreo. Hello. Oh, good morning. <laughs> oh, good morning, hello, say hello. <laughs> She's living for her moment of fame. Huh? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Hey. She always gets so excited to see me every morning and it's precious. <laughs> Honestly, that was perfect timing. I needed a little bit of a dog break to handle all of that. Wow, okay, you guys just keep setting the bar higher for the worst things I have ever seen. Um, So skincare tip, a lot of people might not know this. If you're using a skincare hack that makes your skin bleed aggressively, it might not be a good thing. I know, it's kind of hard to believe, took me by surprise. You are so pretty and your skin is beautiful. I don't really think bleeding is your aesthetic. Would not recommend. <laughs> Why am I out of breath? <laughs> 
Honestly, I don't really have any skincare tips to give beyond don't do that, please. For my sake, if you ever even consider doing that, just picture my face, my reaction. I will come and haunt you, bitch. Don't do it. Okay, this might be a little bit harder than I thought. <laughs> Let's hope this one will be better. Thing you've done to your skin. God, Anders, to share this, but... <laughs> I love your hair. You know that apricot scrub thingy? Yes. From St. Ives, right? Yep. I used that. But not only did I use it, I used it every single day. Wow. For like a good month. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My skin was horrible. Oh, I'm sorry. No, but it, it, it was so horrible. My skin was so damaged. I mean, I wouldn't be able to tell now. Your skin looks great. You are not alone. There are so many people who use that every day. I remember one time having a client talked about how he loved using the St. Ives scrub twice a day and he had broken capillaries all over his skin. Not that I'm saying that it necessarily caused those, but it's sure as hell not gonna help him. And unfortunately, there are so many people who actually do the exact same thing, who use it every single day because they think exfoliation is necessary or they just like how their skin feels after using it every single day. It's not totally uncommon. So you're not alone. I sadly have heard this before. Your skin looks great now, so I'm happy it hasn't damaged it too, too severely, but I'm sorry. At least you know now. I got you on my page. So after scrubbing my face with Neutrogena's pink grapefruit scrub, I would dip the lemon in the salt and scrub it on my After? Acne. Wait, so you not only used the pink grapefruit scrub, which... Uh, you used salt and lemon? Uh, it, salt isn't as bad as sandpaper, so good job on that one, I guess. <laughs> now that the bar is there. Um, but yeah, salt is not great for the face as a scrub. And combining it with lemon, I mean, if you guys have seen any of my videos talking about lemon, I just don't know why people are so insistent about using lemon on their face. I get it. They say it's exfoliating, but there are so many better exfoliants out there that won't cause the sensitivity, irritation, and excessive sun damage that lemon will. Just that level of acidity on the face, paired with the damaging aspects of using a salt to scrub your face, no, no, no. That was rough. I'm so glad you don't do that anymore. I mean, if there's one happy thing I can say from watching all these videos, it's knowing that people don't do this stuff to their skin anymore. And that is improvement. And we celebrate improvement. I mean, hell, in my video, I shared my skincare horror story, which is not my proudest moment. <laughs> We're just gonna pretend like that didn't happen. But wow, girl, I am so sorry. That is, that's rough. <laughs> it is rough, because it's a scrub. Those are the best jokes I've got, accidental puns. Why is it that my puns are always accidental? I'll say one and then everyone's like, ah, ha, 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 and I look at them like, Oh, and then I realize. <laughs> As I'm looking through these TikToks, I do want to say, guys, if you want me to react to them, make sure you have the duet feature turned on because otherwise I'm not going to be able to react to your story that you're sharing or feature them in a YouTube video. So just make sure you have the duet feature turned on because I cannot tell you how many hundreds of videos I've come across that I've wanted to react to and I can't because duet isn't turned on. So make sure you have that feature on. Oh, I've done so pretty. many, wow. many your bad eyes. things to my skin, but this has to be the worst one of all. Okay. I would use Ugh. pure isopropyl alcohol on my face as a toner twice a day. Twice I wouldn't use day. moisturizer and I didn't wear sunscreen. I would also mix oh, no. the isopropyl alcohol with the Aztec clay healing mask and I would keep it on for way more than I was supposed to. Like. <sighs> 30 oh, minutes girl. and I would use it about every other day. Oh my god. My skin was irritated, red, itchy, burning. It was just not happy, but I thought that yeah. meant it was working, so I kept doing it. Oh no. Oh, you guys are killing me. This is sucking what little soul I had left in my body out and just chopping it up on a chopping board. That, okay, so I have unfortunately heard of the isopropyl alcohol as a toner thing. It horrifies me every time I think about it, but yes, that is pretty common to do, particularly for people with oily skin. I don't know who said that's a good thing to do. Whoever is spreading that message, you are facilitating a war crime, but twice a day with no moisturizer. I mean, her moisture barrier had to be absolutely wrecked. There was no moisture left on that skin whatsoever. Not to mention the Indian Hailing Clay Mask, which on its own is not the worst thing in the world, but the problem with it is that it can be very, very, very drying to the skin. And if you're mixing it with alcohol, plus using alcohol twice a day, and then using the mask every other day, which I'm like, you should only use that mask like once a month. Oh my God.
You know, I just laughed through the pain. I'm so sorry. If there's just one thing I can say to every single person on this video is that I am sorry you are loved. You can change and you can move on from the past. It's okay. Well, I won't cancel you guys for any of this. But you know, the trend I'm seeing is that a lot of people did these things when they were teenagers. And how fucking cool is it that now so many teenagers have access to amazing creators talking about skincare online, people spreading the message of skincare, non-sensitizing and non-irritating products. Seeing these just makes me so happy remembering that because the amount of like 10 year olds and 11 year olds who come up to me in public and start talking talking to me about niacinamide and salicylic acid, it just, it warms my heart. And I hope for a day where these skin horror stories will not be a thing because these are just brutal. <laughs> so my skin used to look like this. Oh, okay. So one of my family friends told me that she cleared her acne when she was a teenager by using a cream that was meant for like ingrown hairs, mm -hmm. mixing it with shampoo to dilute it. And then Oof. so, and tried it because you know she had clear skin and anyway oh my god went downhill from there 10 out i'm so sorry well your skin looks awesome it looks like you're doing an amazing job now so good job shampoo to dilute it you know maybe this is the hill for me to die on but i will stand by this statement the majority of horrifying skincare recommendations that i've seen have come from people who already have genetically good skin people who have relatively good skin already and don't have to worry about increased sensitivity and the problem is that people who are struggling with you know acne or breakouts or whatever it may be are desperate and will try anything to get good skin they follow these methods and their skin just gets worse. I don't know why it's so hard of a concept for people to realize that if the product isn't formulated to be used on your face, you probably shouldn't use it. I mean, as far as the ingrown hair treatment, it just really depends on exactly what it is. Like I'd have to look at the ingredients because some of them can be good and like gentle and effective. I probably wouldn't recommend it as an all over face cream if that's what he was doing, but mixing it with a shampoo, which has cleansing agents and leaving it on your face is brutal because that means your moisture barrier is always going to be devoid of any moisture. And in order to help heal your acne and your breakouts, you need to make sure that your moisture barrier is taken care of, that your skin is properly moisturized and hydrated so that you don't consider to see breaks in the skin. Man, that's bad advice. <laughs> I apologize, but you're your skin looks great now, good job. Oh, I need some eye drops, the stress is making my eyes red. Uno momento. Okay, can we handle more? Oh my God, Laura duetted this. Oh, I am so excited to see this. She does horrific stuff to her skin, but she's so dang funny. I'm nervous for this because I have seen her do some crazy shit to her skin. So I know this is about to be bad. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my time to shine. <laughs> No, I know y'all are probably thinking, oh, Lord. you know, Lori, it's probably that Elmer's glue you put on your face. You know, when you stick stuff all over it or all the yes. face masks that you do or, you know, yada, 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 because I do all kinds of stuff to my skin, right? And it's not good. These aren't good things. However, the worst <laughs> thing that I've ever done to my skin is that I will incessantly pick it apart for hours in the mirror just to oh, remove any no, blemishes, no. right? Like if I see anything under my skin at all, it does not matter if I'm bleeding, if I'm ripping apart my skin, nothing. I have Girl. to remove it. I have to, I'm literally covered in scars on my chest, on my arms, on my no. stomach and on my face and on my back because I have dermatillomania and I can't stop picking. Um, it's actually a mental illness associated yeah. with like an extreme form of OCD. Yep. I see a dermatologist now to help reduce some of the scarring. Oh, I should good. probably go see a therapist. Oh. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, nothing I've ever done to my skin has been worse than that. Oh, poor thing. You know, that is a struggle that a lot of people have. And it, it, she's absolutely right. A lot of times it does come down to mental illness, not all the time, but a lot of times it can be contributed to that, like whether it's anxiety or OCD. For some people, it can be a coping mechanism. Okay, my earring keeps sliding down my ear and I'm about to chuck it across the room. Stay put, bitch. And it's difficult because that's not something that you can just simply change with like a product recommendation. It's, it's habitual, it's coping. And I've actually seen dermatologists talk about this before. And rather than any individual product recommendation, or a specific routine, the biggest recommendation I've seen from dermatologists to help prevent picking is just to not spend time looking in the mirror. The more time you spend looking in the mirror, you, the more likely you are to actually pick at your skin. And when it comes to getting ready in the morning, the best thing you can do is just do your routine really quickly and then get out of there. Don't spend time looking at your skin up close in the mirror because you inevitably will pick. And the best way just to avoid that is first to leave the bathroom. But also, like she said, it's good to get treatment for your mental health because if she knows that is a symptom of her mental health, then it's definitely wise to see 
therapist or to see a psychologist to be able to help treat that. There's no shame in seeing a therapist. I have a therapist, my mental health is shite. And sometimes that can be a great option too. Well, I was not expecting her to go in that direction. I, I didn't realize that she struggled with that. And it is interesting considering like all the horrible things I've seen her do to her skin and that this would be the worst. But truthfully, it is one of the worst things you can do to your skin. And I know if it's related to anxiety or OCD, some people just aren't able to control it. But if you can, please, please stop picking at your skin because it's just awful. It'll cause scarring. It's not a great thing to do. So I can safely say that I've won this debate. <laughs> can I just add that this was like years ago, way before I was educated on skincare, sun okay. damage, anything like that. And oh my God, please sun do damage. not do this because oh, no. you will get burnt. I remember I was looking up hacks one day for like skincare and stuff. And I saw that if you use Listerine, that it really helps spots. So I used to put Listerine all over my face as a toner. Oh my gosh. Then put on baby oil and then go out in the sun. <gasps> I was doing this for a good month as well. So oh my when I'm God. about 50 years old, I will be looking shriveled as fuck. And thank God you don't look shriveled as fuck. You look great. But man, I feel like maybe I have heard that before. Listerine. I mean, I get it. There's the appeal of the alcohol in it, or if it's an alcohol freeze formula, whatever. It'll help to reduce the actual sebum on your skin because it dries the fuck out of your skin. But to go into the sun right after, <laughs> that's, that's basically stripping your skin of all of its moisture and then going out and doing the most damaging thing to it you can. Yeah, that's bad. I'm sorry, babe. That's rough. I'm surprised I'm still standing. <laughs> I feel like I need to go outside and get some zen after that. Take a chill pill, smoke a blunt. <laughs> no, I'm kidding, I don't I don't smoke. It just gives me anxiety, that would not work. Uh, that was stressful. <laughs> and that first one, I, I swear, that was the worst. That, that was awful. <laughs> it is burned into my mind. I can't get that out of my head. I don't think I ever will be able to. And every time I see a toolbox in the future, I'm gonna be like, I see you, you see me, we see each other. And I'm gonna slowly back the fuck away. That was intense. Um, Let me know what you guys thought of this. If you were also as horrified as me, please let me know in the comment section down below. And make sure you go on TikTok and share your skincare horror story and make sure that I can duet it because I'm happy to do another video like this. I think it would be so much fun. I feel like these stories will just never stop and they continually get worse, so why not? <laughs> I've already lost this much, what's a little more? And yeah, if you guys haven't already, be sure to subscribe to my channel and to the notification bell so that you can see my videos every single week. And I'll see you guys the next one. Mwah.